So, I watched the first six episodes of Arcane, and considering how much I liked what Netflix did with Castlevania, I had pretty high expectations, and damn, this is freaking amazing. If you haven't watched it yet, by all means, do so. This is not sponsored, by the way, this is just my personal opinion. You don't have to have played League of Legends, I haven't, to enjoy it. It's like, seriously, the, the animation quality, the voice acting, the character design, the writing, everything is just freaking on point, including some surprising amounts of realism that I didn't really expect. So let's delve into that a little bit, shall we? So, first off, I have a feeling they consulted a boxer or maybe even a boxing coach for Vi's fighting style. You know, if you look at her training scene, that is some crisp technique right there. Her defense is solid, she covers herself really well. Her head movement is really tight. She does the minimum amount of movement to evade punches and she keeps everything nice and tight and very straightforward direct punches that transfer force very effectively. Really good. Now, in the in the real fighting scenes, her form isn't quite as crisp and tight but that's easy to forgive because that's often the case in the real world too. In practice, when you consciously focus on, you know, tugging your elbows in to protect your ribs, keeping everything nice and tight and throwing straight forward without, you know, any kind of shoulder movement, anticipatory twitches and telegraphing and everything, keeping everything really nice and tight, that's pretty easy to do in training, but in a real life situation when the adrenaline kicks in, when you start to get punched in the face, it's it takes a lot more to be able to maintain that. That's the goal, of course. Ideally, you want to practice enough that you can maintain efficient, clean technique even under duress in a real fight, but sometimes it can fall apart a little bit, especially as you get fatigued and we see that here. In this fight, Vi is using brawler weapons. I would call them maybe some kind of Kestus, and you can tell that in the beginning she is still fairly quick, even though you can tell that those things are weighing her down. Like The movement is a little bit slower, and, and you can tell that they're kind of throwing her around a little bit. Like She doesn't have the, the same clean punches, but it's more telegraphed. She puts more power into it and follows through a lot more, which makes sense if you have more weight on your hands, particularly since those are just too large for her. They weren't made for her. They're Vanders. The animations here are really good, and again, she's great at uh, defensive actions. Here you can see how she evades the knife. And again, she does it with as little movement as possible, which is great because it's faster. It's more difficult because if you mess it up, you have a knife in your face. <laughs> so if you're not skilled enough, you may have to use longer movements to be able to make sure that you actually evade it effectively. But the tighter you can keep it, the faster you'll be back on and the more efficient you'll be. Also the way she is catching the knife with the Kestis or whatever you want to call it. Vander's got a nice move here too. He blocks the punch, wraps his arm around in preparation for his hook. Now in a real fight, he would still have to worry about the guy's other arm. <laughs> he wouldn't just stand there like, oh no, I can't do anything. But for a cinematic scene that looks cool, Totally fine. Then we've got this fight, which is one of the most badass and brutal yet down-to-earth brawls I've seen. And Savika also shows really good technique of covering herself nicely, making use of that artificial limb, of course. Uh, Vi seems to have bones of steel or something. Like she's, <laughs> she's punching that metal limb pretty hard, apparently, without breaking her knuckles. That's definitely artistic license right there, but either way, there's some pretty neat moves here. One of the best exchanges right here. Vi dodges, delivers an uppercut to the body, then you've got this, this quick jab right there. Vi knows when to use a power punch and when to use an actual jab, which is something you see really rarely in animated fight scenes. You know, the jab is really not intended to do a lot of damage. It's more of a harassment attack. So you just, you just throw it out with just 
the fist, you don't put your entire body weight into it and try to, you know, punch as hard as possible. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very quick attack that you can't see coming as easily because it doesn't telegraph at all. And uh, so she does that, but she also does these loaded power punches to the body. Very nice. And this is a great move. Effective and looks cool as hell. She dodges the punch off to the side and shoots an uppercut right under the arm and hits her that way in the face. That's... Mm. And clearly she can't just box. That kick to the leg to break Savika's structure? Nice. The gun handling is another thing that stood out to me. Perhaps just because my standards are so low, having grown up with 80s action movies where everybody shoots from the hip without aiming like a total buffoon. Now in some situations hip firing would be okay. If you're using a shotgun with buckshot, if you just really quickly got to take a shot at close range, yeah you can get away with it. Plus of course Jinx has to do it this way. It's such a large gun that you have to strap to yourself for extra support. You have to really support it with your body, with your hips, and you can't just hold this thing out. So obviously she has to hip fire. Plus, whatever she's firing lights up like tracer rounds so she can actually see, she can pretty much aim with the bullet stream. So that's not a problem at all. Even just seeing somebody actually shoulder a rifle and look through the sights, that's like, whoa, realism right there. But this goes a little bit further. The animation here is extremely realistic. If you just look at how Caitlyn shoulders it, but she doesn't just bring it up immediately and it stays there. There's an adjustment, this little movement right here. That's a really neat detail because Typically, whenever you shoulder a rifle, you don't get it into the perfect position right away. You just kind of shift it a little bit to align it better, get a better cheek weld, meaning, you know, pressing your cheek against the stock of the rifle as an additional point of contact to hold it steady. Uh, so that's uh, quite a nice detail. Plus, right before she takes that precision shot, she breathes out, lets out all the air. She doesn't hold her breath, which can lead to some tension that can influence your, your shot at longer distance, but she lets out all the breath to be fully relaxed and then she pulls the trigger in a nice and controlled way. So that's some great handling right there. It's especially funny when comparing Caitlyn in Arcane to Caitlyn in game in this cutscene right here. She really doesn't know how to shoulder the rifle or doesn't care or whatever. I mean, just look at this mess. She does not look through the sights, which are pretty weird to begin with. They're kind of nerf-like sights that don't seem particularly effective, but you know, she does not even align her eye with the sights. So why does she even have those on there? And again, she does not actually shoulder. She tucks it under her arm which is something that you should never ever do with a high recoil rifle. That's a ticket for a black eye or worse. Uh, this thing seems to have a recoil mitigation system. The barrel actually comes back like recoils back without the entire thing moving. So maybe it's not that bad, but still, why would you not shoulder it? It's also good for aiming. You've got a more steady position. At the same time, she's also totally showing off in that scene, you know, shooting at stuff without even looking at the targets at all, not even using a mirror just like this. Either way, in-game Caitlyn technically doesn't handle the rifle properly while Arcane Caitlyn does, so that's nice to see. The barrel cam is a nice touch too. Also, the way the reloading is animated and the sound. Overall, the animations are top-notch, smooth, convincing. The entire thing is very immersive in its presentation, but it's also cool. I mean, the setting in and of itself. You know, fantasy steampunk, hell yeah. In case you didn't know, I like steampunk. <laughs> In case you couldn't figure that out. So also the combination of magic and technology. That's one of the things I often like about steampunk. And uh, that's great overall. I have some nitpicks, which is not a criticism. It's just overthinking for fun. So Hextech, pretty neat idea. You know, utilizing the power of magic by means of technology. These things are not quite plausible, you know, just logically. Like, yeah, okay, they, they use magic to be powered, but it's the same problem as you often have with you know, bionic limbs, you know, particularly partial bionic limb replacements. The logical flaw here is when Jace picks up this rock, 
he has to engage his shoulder, which is not enhanced. Like it, this thing cannot help him. He, it cannot amplify the strength of his shoulder. So he wouldn't actually be able to lift it up like that. That's often a problem with enhanced partial limbs. You know, even if you have all that super strength there, you don't have it in your shoulder. And even if it's an entire limb that goes all the way up to the shoulder and connects to your torso, that's better because then you can actually use your upper body muscles, which of course you have a lot more bulk and more strength thereby to support that. But there might still come a point where you're generating so much force with that amplified limb that it might crack ribs or you know tear tendons in your upper body break your shoulders etc that's always a drawback with that compared to a full exoskeleton which supports everything and connects the limb to the ground through the legs as well and finally something that just confuses me i've been trying to figure out caitlin's rifle the thing is interesting so i couldn't figure out with certainty if the rifle that young Caitlin has in the competition is the same as the one she has later, but there is an animation of the rifle model on apparently the official Arcane Facebook page. And it's a break action, but it's also a lever action, apparently. And in this scene, she unloads two cartridges from that. Which is strange because in the competition, it seems like a single shot break action. Uh, and we can see that this thing only has one barrel. When she folds it, you can see at first glance it may look like two barrels, but it's the same barrel that connects normally. But because it's folded, you see two. It's just one barrel. By the way, the folding is a nice design and you have that on a few real life firearms as well. Like the kel Sub 2000, for example folds up very similar to this so the strange thing is in the competition it looks like it's a single shot break action rifle and you only ever see her load one cartridge at a time however there are four targets popping up in quick succession which are all being shot very rapidly you have two competitors so it makes sense if both have two cartridges they could fire four shots you know, both of them together in quick succession, two each. There is an automatic break action shotgun in the real world, the Beretta UGB 25 XL, which is a very strange hybrid. So it, it's a break action with a single barrel, but you can load a second shot shell on the side, which it automatically loads as soon as you fire the first shot. Uh, the idea with that is that now you have two shots in quick succession, but you have a single barrel instead of either side by side or over under, where, of course, the, the relation of the barrel to the side changes between one shot and another. I don't know why you would just use a semi-automatic shotgun, but hey, whatever, it exists. Uh, maybe it's some kind of deal like this. Maybe it is somehow a break action, but also a lever action. I really don't see the point. The thing is by combining those two mechanisms, you're getting rid of most of the advantages of a break action, which is simplicity. You know, break action can almost can fail. Basically the trigger mechanism can fail. Otherwise, there isn't too much that can go wrong. With a lever action, you have more moving parts, more potential for something to go wrong, let alone semi-automatic. So why would you take the simplicity, which is the advantage of one, and combine it with the higher complexity of the other, which just cancels each other out? You know what I mean? So it seems like she's able to load two cartridges, but then there is this other scene where she fires three shots in succession. One, two, three. Apparently without reloading in between. What's going on there? How many cartridges does this damn thing hold? Oh, and in a more recent episode, Enforcer rifles fire semi-automatically without ejecting brass. I'm starting to think the firearms here can just do whatever the situation requires. Plot guns. Maybe it is a different rifle. Maybe it's just genuinely a mistake. I. 
I'm thinking too much into it, but hey, this is what I do. Anyway, nitpicks or not, like I said, Arcane is freaking amazing. You should definitely watch it if you haven't already. I can't wait for more episodes, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and have a good one, folks. Mm -hmm.